Does drinking coffee prevent you from healing your allergies, healing your hay fever, your ragweed or your pollen allergies? That's the question we're going to look into today. My name is Peggy from PeggyShimmer.com. Warmly welcome you to this channel, Gut Feelings, here to support you to become your own health expert and really learn to play this incredible instrument so you have all the energy you need to just go out there and bring your own gifts into the world. Now, if you don't know my personal health story, just in one sentence, this theme about hay fever and allergies is close to my heart. I suffered 15 years from low energy, from sneezing, itching, didn't want to go out of the house, couldn't really focus in university on school, I had brain fog all the time, couldn't focus. I just felt so miserable and only got worse and worse the older I got. So guys, if this is the case for you and you've tried so many different things, I know there are so many YouTube videos out there and health advice and doctors tell you things and you've been on this journey for a long time i'm emphasizing with you i understand this is a big issue and please know that it's not your fault you didn't do anything wrong i remember i was blaming myself oh god i don't eat healthy enough and i don't do this well enough i'm not strong enough whatever having allergies is really just the top of the iceberg there's so much going on beneath the surface, yeah, beneath these symptoms. If we understand that what's under the water, it's much easier to heal allergies and it doesn't need to take forever. Yeah, once you've got a glue on it, and that's exactly what this channel is about. It's about giving you small things that you can integrate into your daily life and just see small improvements and then you take on another step. You don't need to change your whole life around just from one second to the other. You can do that if you're really want to go for it but also step by step you can feel what's good for your body and then just take the next step normally i just dive right into content this time i thought hey let's practice listening to your own body and just really also activating your intuitive knowledge what you know about this combination of your symptoms and drinking coffee so before i give you the view of the natural path the medicinal background of coffee and allergies i invite you to just take a paper Take a paper, take a pen and take a few moments to tune into this question. Does coffee make your allergies worse? Yeah, does coffee prevent you from healing your hay fever, your ragweed, your pollen allergy? Or is it actually good for your body? So with this question, just do a bit of free writing. Yeah, pause this video here. Take a few minutes, not more than five, definitely not. And just write down. Yeah, it can be positive. For example, maybe it gives you more energy. Maybe it makes you feel more alive. Maybe it lifts your mood. Maybe it also aggravates your symptoms on the other hand. Whatever it is, maybe you feel acid in the body. Just allow yourself to write down some things. So what I share with you afterwards will have a bit more context for yourself. You're also able to absorb the information better in your brain. So I invite you to pause this video here and then come back to this video. Well done, gut feeler. Now, what's happening inside your body when you react allergic? Well, there's a myriad of things that happens in your body. But first of all, and that's also where you get all the symptoms from, it's inflammation. Yeah, you feel the heat coming up. My head was like a big watermelon. It just felt like swollen up. So there's heat, there's itching, itchy eyes, there's swelling, there's redness. Yeah, all these typical inflammation symptoms. Maybe you also feel tired. I remember I was just like feeling completely brain fog. I couldn't really focus. Also mood wise, I often felt like depressed. I even felt angry, most of all at myself because I wasn't able to function. And maybe you also experience things happening with your digestion, yeah? that you feel like bloated, you feel cramps, you feel you can't eat all the things you used to eat. That's also very typically related to allergies. Now, when your immune system is working at full speed and you have these inflammation symptoms, you need a lot of energy. Your body needs to produce a lot of energy. That's where the heat comes from. And you also burn a lot of minerals, a lot of nutrients just for this inflammation reaction. Yeah, Because that's such a big thing for the body that's happening there on all levels. And I wanted to give you this as a preface, just for making the context clearer for the information to come about coffee. I've structured this video for you in two parts. First, we're going to talk about the three effects that coffee has on your body, three different organ system. That's your digestion, that's your hormonal balance, and then it's vitamin and nutrient absorption. The second part, I'm going to give you one of my secret tips that I've just discovered for myself a few months ago, how to change your coffee habits if that's something you want to do. Super simple, it tastes almost better than coffee, and on the same time, it's awesome for your body. It supports your healing from allergies, it supports your liver, it supports your gut health, really also just clears up the mind. An awesome thing. 
that's what we're gonna that's what we're gonna look into and that's what we're gonna look into at the end so stick with me to, so stick with me through the end so stick with me until the end to get that secret so stick with me so stick with me until the end to get that secret so stick with me until the end to not miss out on the secret. Okay, guys, so... Okay, guys, now let's start with the three effects coffee has on your body and especially if you're suffering from hay fever. The first one is your digestion and your liver. Now, depending on where you're at with your allergies, you might think, what does digestion have to do with my allergies? Well, actually, it's super, super connected. I've recorded several videos about the true root cause of allergies, what's really behind there, because it's not your body gone crazy. It's not your immune system being crazy and there's something wrong with your body. Absolutely not. Our body is always supporting us, even if all the autoimmune diseases that traditional medicine labels as autoimmune because they don't know what's happening. So don't buy into that too easily. There are two root causes of allergies. It's related to toxin, to the high toxicity that build up in your body. And the second one is pathogens in your body, mostly viral from issue and bacterial, viruses like Epstein-Barr and bacteria like strep, streptococcus, a resistant strain of strep. Again, have a look at the videos. I'm gonna link you that in the end screen so you can dive more into the connection between your gut and your immune system and your allergies, yeah, how they go all together. Now, what effect does coffee has on your digestive system? First of all, because it's a bean and it's roasted, it's roasted on high, high temperatures, it's very acid for the body. So if you have inflammation happening in your body, you're already in an acid state. If you eat a lot of grains, if you eat dairy products, if you eat high protein foods, yeah, even if it's soy, any kinds of gluten, meat, eggs, all this kind of stuff, beans, they are all acid. So things that are alkaline, on the other hand, are fruits and vegetables. But nowadays, this acid and alkaline balance is way, way more to the acid side. So if you drink then coffee on top, your body gets even more acid. And for your digestion, that's really just one part. The other, the most important thing regarding your digestion and coffee and how that negatively impacts your hay fever is because it depletes your stomach acid depletes your good HCL, which takes a lot of energy to rebuild. Most of us don't have enough good stomach acid. We have a lot of acid in our body, but it's not built of good stomach acid. It's built out of bacteria. Also bacteria, when they excrete, this is very acid and it creates an inflammation reaction in our body. This is why people have GERD, bloating, digestive issues. And of course, if there's so much inflammation happening there, it also has an effect on your immune system. Yeah, your immune system already if you have allergies is working on full speed and if it needs to take care of this inflammation reaction in your gut as well it's just getting worse furthermore anything that is roasted yeah may it be fried or baked your gut is very very sensitive yeah even a healthy gut is already sensitive it's just imagine that like a really fluffy baby skin that you have inside your body it's very sensitive it has a high volume lots of skin it's like this pink flesh and everything that is roasted for your intestines feels like burnt. It's very aggressive and puts a lot of stress on your gut. Now, before we come to the second thing, I invite you to just take a deep breath and just have a look at your paper, what you've written down and just intuitively feel, is there some resonance with that? Is it maybe something completely opposite? Did you thought that coffee actually helps your digestion? Just take a moment to tune into that before we come to the second step. One, two, three. Now let's look into the second subject, how coffee and hay fever relate to each other and if it's good for you to drink coffee. Now maybe you have written on your paper that coffee just makes you feel good. Maybe you wake up in the morning, you feel down, you feel have low energy and you just drink a coffee and you feel like, oh my God, the day can begin. It's just a mood booster for you. Well, if that's the case, it's actually there's something physically to that because what coffee does is it increases our sensitivity for serotonin. Serotonin is this good feel hormone that makes you feel everything's well. And that's also the reason why we can get addicted to coffee. It's not only caffeine that pushes us, it's also this increased receptivity for the happy hormone serotonin. Unfortunately, that's just one part how coffee impacts our hormones. The really bad news with coffee is that 
our adrenal glands get affected by drinking coffee even if it's not much even if it's just once a day or even just once a week it will have an effect on your overall health and on the long term also for your hay fever and that's because coffee depletes your adrenal glands of the stress hormones cortisol and adrenaline they get flushed out in the system they are both highly erosive for your blood vessels they create a lot of stress on your body because they are actually a fight and flight hormone. Yeah? If there is a fire breaking out and you need to run and you have a broken leg and you just need to run. That's why we have adrenaline because it's such a powerful hormone that even makes us not feel pain that it's in our body or tiredness. For the hay fever candidates, a lot of the struggle that we have with hay fever is we are so tired. Yeah, So I completely understand if you go for coffee because you, you just feel devastated, you can't get out of bed, your body doesn't want to move and you drink coffee and you feel better, I completely understand that. The problem with that is that the body actually needs rest because it's struggling with something that needs your attention and just pushing your body to the limit is only going to make it worse. It's like the treat of chocolate that just tastes awesome serotonin in your brain and then you have like this big crash of energy. You feel like poof, it's worse than before and that's because we basically we tricked our body, we forced our body to work harder even if we were struggling before and actually needed rest. Apart from putting stress on your adrenal glands, what also happens is there's a certain hormone called GABA, which is inhibited. And this GABA hormone is for relaxation, for sleep. And that's why people often can't sleep if they drink coffee late in the evening. This hormone is important for our regeneration, for recovering after a long day. So it's, it's key that we have that and coffee actually inhibits it. So anything Anything that prevents us from recovering, from healing, also prevents us anything that... We make it much more difficult for our body to heal from allergies and really attack the root cause. Yeah, to fight off the strep, to flush out the toxins, to fight off Epstein-Barr, get that out of our liver. If we drink coffee on top because in a way we inhibit the natural signals of our body. For me as a coffee lover that was really hard because coffee is so much entrained in our cultures. It's a way to communicate with other people sitting in a cafe, meeting in front of the cafe machine in the office, just having this social life. Yeah, It comes with cigarettes and it comes with coffee, both bad for our health. But hopefully at the end of this video stick with me, you're going to be presented with a great alternative that you can do that actually tastes awesome and it has a great effect on your body and you can also share it. You can bring it with you to the office and just create your own microcosmos. Maybe the people around, if they hear what coffee does to their body, they also want to drink your thing and then you just create your own microcosm. This is how we change our habits and this is how we inspire others, how we have an impact on the world. Just try it out yourself and if you like it, it might spread just around in your office or even further beyond. And now last but not least, the third point, vitamins and minerals. What do they have to do with coffee? Well, one thing is that coffee triggers our kidneys to release precious minerals like zinc, calcium, magnesium. It just flushes them out and you lose them through the urinary tract they just go out there and you would have really needed them for restoring your liver health, for helping your digestion to heal, fighting off those nasty pathogens like viruses. Zinc is highly antiviral, antibacterial. So losing minerals on top of having allergies is really a bad thing for your body. Another thing caffeine does to our digestive system is caffeine reduces the absorption of iron through the stomach and on top inhibits vitamins, precious vitamins to be absorbed through the gut, through the stomach, like vitamin B12, for example, that most of us have a deficiency in already. And one more thing, because your liver is already impaired when you have allergies, yeah, it's likely sluggish, it's full of toxins, there are bacteria, the viruses in there that actually needs cleaning out. If you drink coffee from a normal coffee shop, you have, you just store up on toxins. Yeah, you lose minerals, you stress your adrenal glands and on top you put more toxins into your body because coffee is the number one highly pesticides treated food in the entire world. There's so much pesticides happening on there. So if you drink ever coffee again, make sure it's organic and fair trade. So you leave a good mark on the planet and at least don't trigger your body with more toxins and stress your body and your gut more. So to answer the question very clearly, is coffee good for your body if you have allergies? No, it's not good for your body. It puts a lot of stress on you. Now, if I would be you, if people just take away something that I really love, I get angry. So if you're angry or kind of feeling 
depressed right now. I understand that. That's why I want to give you an alternative to try out. See if it works for you. It has an awesome effect on your body. And it actually tastes pretty good. I had no idea. And this is what's in this glass. This is dandelion. Dandelion roots and leaves. You can also just use the roots if you want to have an even stronger taste. I recommend them to use them unroasted because everything that is roasted feels burnt for your intestines. And you have an awesome flavor. It's a tiny bit bitter, like coffee as well, but then it also has like a caramelly flavor. It has like an earthy, warm, feel-good flavor, which is great because dandelion is one of the best liver detoxifier. It's great for your liver to help your liver heal. It's also awesome for your digestion. Everything that is bitter and is a natural food is usually good for your liver. Things like rocket, grapefruit, artichoke, aspargus, but also of course dandelion leaves. What I like about this dandelion root tea is that you can use it like coffee. So if you have like a French press, you can just put that in there and press it down. Or if you're more like the tea bag fan, it also comes as a tea bag. I put you the links for my favorite products in the description below so you can check them out. I'm almost sure you're gonna love them as much as I do, of course. There's nothing like coffee. Yeah, coffee is a specific taste, the same as dandelion leaves. There's nothing like dandelion leaves. Just imagine we would get all completely freaked out and everywhere we go, it's just, do you want to have your dandelion coffee right now? Instead of, do you want to have a soy cappuccino? People just want to drink their dandelion latte or, or dandelion iced coffee, things like that. Wouldn't that be amazing? If you like this video, if you feel this was something valuable for you, maybe something inspiring, give it a thumbs up and let me know what it was in the comments below. I'm looking forward to see you in the next video. Have a great day and all the blessings to your healing journey with allergies. It's absolutely possible. I know you can do it. Bye bye.